welcome to Seller Style with Lydia Ann. Today I have a wonderful guest, Dr. Richard Cherney. Um, he's just like one of these people that are just absolutely fantastic. He's an inspiration to everyone. He's wrote his own book. Yes, I have. Yes, The Little Engine That Did It. Yes, right? The Little Engine That Did It. And what inspired you to write this book, Richard? Well, it's a memoir of my life, uh, having cerebral palsy. And I remember as a kid in kindergarten, during nap time in Mrs. Levitt's class, uh, listening to the little engine that did it on the phonograph. And I would always close my eyes mm -hmm. and pretend I was that little engine that was going to beat the big one. So that became a metaphor of my life, which I wrote about in my memoir, The Little Engine That Did It, on Balboa Press, published by Balboa Press. And it's available on Amazon.com, Barnes and & Noble, and I'll even bring it to your house if you buy a copy. Definitely go buy a copy. And Richard's just lovely. He's bright. He has a, doctor, a doctorate degree in clinical psychology. That's right. I'm a clinical psychologist. Yeah. I mean, he's doing uh, wonderful things. And you're also trying to really facilitate supporting people with disabilities. Yes. Um, that's another message in my book. Uh, specifically empowering parents that have children with disabilities because when you have a child that's born with special circumstances your first reaction is to be afraid and to panic and say oh my god what's gonna happen so I wrote this book so people parents with kids would know you know what even though they have this particular difficulty it can turn into a strength and it can empower them to achieve great things in life because we all have a disability of some kind, Lydia. Yeah, and, I, I believe that. You know? Especially today, too, disabilities are so ubiquitous. You have a, a huge um, demographic of people that have, have autism. Like yes. It's like one in a hundred. And uh, Lydia, and we're becoming yeah. a nation of, dis of older people. Yeah. So as we age, we become disabled and impaired physically or in other ways. So, yes, the democratic demographic is getting larger and I love that ten dollar word that you used ubiquitous <laughs> <laughs> I can't even you know, spell yeah, that word I, you know? I, like, I like my words <laughs> you were good at word power in yeah, school right there yeah. right? I like my words what can I say <laughs> and, you know and one of the reasons I became a clinical psychologist is that I felt because of my specific problem my difficulty cerebral palsy I could really help uh, counsel people in that way. Well, you do, uh, Dr. Richard. You have a wonderful way about you. He's very intuitive. Um, Dr. Richard's very perceptive. And he just, you have just like such a lovely, empathetic, um, calming nature about you. And you, you, I don't know, you're just so lovely. How do you know, wow. like, Dr. Richard? Oh, that's you so do. sweet. I'm getting goosebumps as you're yeah. talking about this. <laughs> and, uh, you know, along with my co host, yeah. Jamie Love, and, uh, we have a show called Journey into Awareness, and she was on your show, Stellar Style. Yes, back she was in helping July. me do plants. That's right, that's right. Yes, we did plant decorating. That's with right, that's love. right, that's right. Yeah. So, uh, her and I helped to spread the word about love because love is really where it's at. And that's really how your attitude is going to change. And Jamie's all about love, and I'm all about love, and you're all about love. And also, part of love can be manifested in the psychology of color and how we use color to change our moods, make ourselves feel better. Like, my favorite color is purple. So today, I'm having a so purple day. So you're wearing the purple shirt. That's right. I didn't know. I was like, is he wearing the purple for me? I don't know. <laughs> no, I like the purple, so I didn't know. So what makes purple your favorite color? Well, because it's just something I'm attracted to. Uh, it feels, it's a very rich color, and it's a royal color. Uh, royalty wore purple. Well, that's true. It is a royal color. You know, and that's why I like purple. Part of when I do interior design, I really take into consideration um, color schemes because it's so vitally important into setting a mood um, into your interior design. Like you want to induce a certain feeling when someone enters a room. Right. And color definitely, you know, it has such a powerful effect. Um, but we're going to take a commercial break, and when you get back, we will talk t uh, to you about the power of color and color in design. Here on Stellar Interiors, <laughs> on the Daily Blue. Bye.
Hello everyone, I'm Corinne Murphy Caro and I'm the founder of TheDailyBlue.com. The Daily Blue is all about spreading positive news about Long Islanders and we want to hear from you. Tell us your stories. Our show hosts are waiting to hear from you. Sponsor an ad or advertise with us. Call us now, 631-761-9223. Hi, welcome back to Stellar Saw Lydian. Uh, we're here today and we're going to be talking about the psychology of colors. I have my great co-host, Dr. Richard, here today. And he's a doctor in clinical psychology and he is going to be giving us some background information on color. And I will, you know, give my input on how I, you know, put color into my interior design work. Well, Lydian. Uh, if you're familiar with chakras, which are the energy centers, and that's from Eastern medicine, each one of those energy centers, and we have seven chakras, mm -hmm. has a color. And your root chakra is red. Red. Okay. And red, to me, when I see red, and if I incorporate in design, it's passion, right? Yes. And that's exactly what it is energetically. It's power. It is power. And it's associated with the kundalini energy, which is called the sleeping serpent mm -hmm. in your body. So that's the first color. And that's located on your tailbone. Okay. That Energetically speaking. Very interesting. Okay. Yes. Now, if I have clients, I'll take it uh, into consideration, like the psychological moods that they're in. You know, if you have someone that right. tends to be um, very agitated easily, red is probably a color you want to shun from, right? That's right. Because it could evoke a lot of feelings of anger. That's correct. I heard red even can increase um, appetite. Yes, it can. Yeah. And they recommend not to paint your bedroom walls red, red because it will, it will disturb your sleep patterns or prevent you from sleeping. Interesting. Yes. All right, so tell me more it's about the chakra. It's a fiery color. It it's is. energetic. It's powerful. And the next color up from there is orange. And that's, a, that's associated with your uh, sexual uh, centers in your body. Oranges. See, yes. I didn't know that. Yes. <laughs> I didn't know that. I thought red was more associated with that. Interesting. Mm, yes. You're the expert. So, on the color. well, I'm not an expert. I just know a little bit about it. Yeah. And so uh, that's associated with your sexual energy and also connection in that way and then you move up into your solar plexus which is located right by your belly button okay. and that color is yellow and that's the color of emotions okay so when you have when you're focusing on that color so sometimes if people want to work on their emotions they might be more of a yellow person and it has a brightness to yes, it. it yellow. Does. It's inviting out like yes. and, and, and very harmony. It gives you a sense of harmony. And, and, and you know, uh, happiness. Happiness. Okay. Yeah. So okay. that's yellow. And then you have the heart chakra, which is either pink or green. Like a light green, like a short green. Mm -hmm. Now people associate pink, um, when I do interior design work, pink's very much associated with, with girls. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, isn't that the most like calming color? It's supposed to be the most soothing? Yeah, absolutely, yes. Yeah. Uh, because it's the color of love. Uh, and one of Jamie's favorite colors, my co-host and my fiance, on she Journey into pink? Awareness, she likes pink. Oh, nice. Yes, she's a she's a pink person. She's a pink girl. Yes. Yeah, I like Jamie. She's sweet and lively yes, she is. and Burry. a nice Burry. energy about her. I wish she was here today. Yeah. She could add another dimension to the show. Yeah. And then you're going up, okay, into your throat chakra, and that's light blue. And that's the color of communication. Okay. So when, when you want to you wanna enunciate yourself, you want to be able to speak, they say, wear some blue. Wear some blue. I love blue. Blue happens to be one of my favorite colors, baby blue. I yes, love it as I, an um, accent, yes, especially yes. in my interior design. Robin's egg blue, that's beautiful. I love yes, it. It yes, gives yes. a very tranquil feeling, and yes. you can mix up the hues of blue. And I don't know, it's just like a nice, tranquil feeling. It reminds you of the water. That's right. And it's very soothing and calming. That's right. And then um, the third eye, which is located here, that's mm -hmm. indigo, which is a deep, navy blue. Yeah, that's a great color too. That's a great color yeah. too. And that's your intuitive self. Mm -hmm. Okay, we tune into people through this third eye more so than we realize. But usually when you meet somebody you can feel energetically if you like them or not and that's because you're tuning into their 
their energy center up there. Oh, really? Yes. Well, I liked your energy center right away, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> I liked yours too, Lydia. It was really nice. Yeah. Uh, and so that's how we, we really work it. And then the third color, I mean the last one, which is the number seven, that's the crown chakra, and that's located up here. And that's the color of purple or white. Oh, nice. Okay. And the reason that it's up at the crown is that's the closest connection to God. Okay. And in certain religions, they cover their, the, t the crown of their head with a hat in deference to God. So that's why that's done, too. So all these colors together also make white. I love white. Yes. I have to say, I'm biased okay. towards white. Yes, um, uh, as, as you, I, I can see right here. I do, I love white. It's very angelic looking to me. It has a purity, um, definitely um, a very clean, pristine look, mm -hmm. which I love to incorporate into my designs because my interior design work is more contemporary, modern. I do some transitional as yes. well, but I love the, the pristineness and of white. And white goes with everything. It goes with everything. Yes. It magnifies your space. It keeps things open and airy. So I tend to be partial to um, neutral colors, but I like I like all the colors. So I like to incorporate them in paintings and artwork That's right. for pops of color. I mean, even though I like purple, I would never do a room in purple because it just wouldn't work. But it would be bold. It depends like what kind of mood or what kind of room it is. You always have to take into consideration what the room you're going to utilize the room for. If you're, it, you know, mm -hmm. it could be a pool room, That's it, true. it could be a den, like That's whatever true. you are going to utilize the room for definitely needs to be taken into consideration when you are choosing colors because you are definitely going to evoke a certain type of mood with the colors that you do choose to use. That's right. And that's what I think we don't really tune into and we're not aware of. Uh, in terms of the colors that we choose sometimes because it's directly reflective of our mood for that day. It sometimes, is. yes. And it can evoke a certain mood too. Absolutely. So that's what, what's beautiful about your show today and what you're showing your audience is about the power of color and how it really affects your emotional mood and your power, you know? So my advice to everybody out there is Find your color. I like it, exactly. And use it well. Find your color, use what you like, make your room beautiful and inviting, and definitely incorporate your spirit into the design. Yes. So hopefully we inspired you and gave you some decorating tips on color, on color schemes for your interior space. And you could reach me on my social media as well as Dr. Richard, and reach me on my email if you would like some interior decorating help. And that's it. It was so wonderful to have you. Oh, it was wonderful to be here, Lydia. And, and your book. Buy Dr. Richard's book. And Jamie, we miss you. Yes. Jamie Love, we miss you. And come back from San Diego real soon. Bye. And I recommend figure painting for everybody. <laughs> See you next time. Bye.